function. And we can give it a type of primary. So this, this these are basically um, coming from the ant design. And uh, let's give, give it some inline styles. So let's give it a background color of green, as well as a border color. of green as well. Okay. So that's basically the um, show model. And so let's create another one. We have to create another one for the, the details model. So show details model. And we're going to set is, yeah. We're gonna take that and set is detail model to true. Yeah. Now we're going to um, put this on the details. So let's go to the details button. So on click, show details model. So whenever the details button gets clicked, um, this function runs. So now what else do we have to do? And when the, there's, a, there's another button which is, which is, uh, I, I believe we have a cancel button, right? Yep, so whenever, so we, yeah, handle cancel. Yeah, so we have to create a button for this as well. I mean, a function for that. So let's create a function for this. Handle cancel. We now what we do is we do set we set we set the uh, variable back to false and we're gonna have to do the same thing for the handle details modal cancel. So for this one, it's going to be, we're just going to set it back to false. And this one is going to get used for the details. We're going to do the, let's look at the, do we have a close button? Okay, we don't, I don't think we made it yet. Oh, okay, we have to specify, yeah. So here, we have to uh, specify the um, title. So this is for the details model. Product details. Visible. So whenever the is detail, it is detail details model visible is True, that's when this model is gonna be visible. So when on cancel, we, we pass in this function that we just created and for the footer as well, we create a button, we call it close, give it a key of close. And when this button is clicked, we do handle, we, yeah, we do this. So whenever, whenever this close button is, is clicked, handle details modal cancel function is called. 
and it sets this variable to false, and then the model disappears. That's basically how it works. So, okay. So, so we have the modal setup completed. Now we just have to um, style this card. We haven't styled it yet. And, um, and then we have to um, make, make the API calls. So, okay. Here, what do we do is, okay, so we can, we can do the handle submit. So whenever the save button is called, we do the handle submit. So we could just create it here. Okay, before that, let's just style it. So in the um, components folder, we have to create a new file called underscore product card dot scss and in the main we have to basically import it product product card okay so now this basically is where we start so as you can see, we have all the classes here. So we're just going to be calling the classes and applying some designs to it. Let me just check if I have created all the classes. So card container. Okay. Details. Let's give it a class name of card content. So this is card content. And button. This is modal. Okay. So now we can just start getting to the actual uh, designing. Okay, so we can do product dash card. Let me see if, if I have this. Okay. Okay, so we want the card to have a have a maximum width, so we can do that. We're doing this, we I want it to be uh, three hundred twenty pixel, and the height I want it to be auto adjustable. So and let's go to border radius around the edges. Let's give it an eight pixel, and. We're going to give it a cursor of um, pointer whenever the mouse hovers over it. And let's give it a box shadow of RGBA. Let's see, uh, 0 0.1, 0 pixel, 4 pixel, and 12 pixel. And in the image, let's give it a height of 200 pixel, the width of 320 pixel. Dot card dash container. This is basically another class that we made here. So we basically were targeting this class now. Okay, so for the card container, let's give it a max width of 310 pixels and also a padding of 10 pixels and a margin of zero auto. So zero pixels from the top and bottom and automatic equal pixels from the left and right. And 
style the buttons. So do a dis display flex and give it a give it a gap between them for about 30 pixels. And if you do justify content space between, they're basically gonna go to the both ends of the row. So here, what we're gonna do is we're going to style the card content, which is gonna be, which is gonna be here. Card dash content. And we're gonna style the H2. Let's go to color of like one zero one zero zero three eight. Yeah, there we go. That's the color. And set a font family of. That's the font family. And let's give it a font size of 20 pixels. And also we're gonna have a font um, style of normal. We're gonna have a font weight of 700. And let's give it a margin of five pixels from the top and bottom and zero pixel from the left and right. For the paragraph tag, we can um, set a font size of 15 pixels. Font style of normal. Hey, I'm sorry to yes. have a yes. question. Yes. So on the car content, right? You put yes. H2 element inside the car content. Yeah, like yes. A... Yes. Okay, okay. So the car content is basically um these two. Like the this is the H2 and this is the P tag. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And this is the car top section with like, we have like these two, we have the details button and the vehicles. That's like the top of the card. Oh. And that's this is basically the image tag. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. <laughs> Sorry guys, this is taking a, a long time because um it just takes a just takes a while. It's good. So um so we're just give it we're just designing the font for now of the um the paragraph tag and we can also give it a line height um so that um we have we can specify the height between these two elements that's basically what line height does okay so now we could just um we could just hard code the values and we can Take a look at it, or we could just um, okay. So in this case, what we actually do is so we could just um, create start creating the. Um, the API API calls, actually, just to like implement it in code. So when the delete button is called, let's find the delete button. So when the when the delete button is called, so on click, you want we want to call handle delete. So now this is a function that we have to specify. We have to basically create. So const handle delete. 
async and try and we are basically going to be um it's almost going to be the same thing so we could just uh, copy this make sure to change the name the handle delete so the base url is going to be the same and um we're going to change, have to change the endpoint to delete and we're going to um yes delete is coming from the from the back end and on the swagger we we have given the end point name is delete yes so and also um so if we, if we check the swagger yep, we are passing the product id when you delete something so we have to pass in the product id as well so that's what we are specifying it like that and if the response is 200 that means it's successful so we can just give it a message that product has been deleted successfully otherwise um error